It seemed to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. So said Elton John about Marilyn Monroe, Princess Diana, the list goes on. But John was bigger than a mere candle. It seemed to me he lived his life like an oil rig flare stuck in a North Sea gale. Like an oil rig, he drew on huge reserves of energy, was physically quite squat, and thanks to his prodigious whiskey intake, helped prop up the economy of Scotland. Your candle burned out long before your legend ever did, continued Elton. And it's no exaggeration to say that Scotland's vast reserves of oil and gas would burn out long before John's legend is ever forgotten. Exaggeration, possibly. Sentimental nonsense, again, unwise to rule it out. But there is broad agreement that John was good. The former BBC television centre. John had a real appetite for this donut-shaped building and snaffled his way along the corridors, gorging on the opportunity as he chomped his way to the top. His big break, or mouthful, coming in 1985 with the BBC's getaway. And it needn't cost you a king's ransom. Consisting largely of John in teeming holiday resorts, sampling oh, cooked breakfasts in blazing sunshine, the show was, like the man himself, cheap and cheerful. A great show. Terrible reviews. Saw it cancelled before the end of its run. But it alerted the BBC's early warning system to John's talent. And he was now a big, fat blip on their radar. This led to what John called his golden period. A veritable roll call of Britain's best-loved telly. Scotland's strongest man. Cash chaser. Britain's holiest hymn. Flytip squad. Britain by balloon. Gibraltar CID which is why in 2012 he was named host of new magazine show This Time, delighting us all with puns about hedgehogs being prickly. Prickly customers. <laughs> John Baskell, what was he like? Oh, what are you like? Yes, it seemed to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. The Life of John Baskell by Alan Partridge. Now, while Telly John was larger than life, Private John devoted himself quietly and without fuss or fanfare to his charitable foundation, the John Baskell Foundation. Here to tell us more about the humble work of John's foundation, the John Baskell Foundation, uh, Jenny is joined by John's brave widow, Fran Baskell. Thanks, Alan. Well, Fran, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Such a load of toss. I mean, um, just a bore of it, too much yeah. sirloin to this colon through in the towel. Yeah. What have you got? Well, I've been on the phone to the council about the ramblers crossing your guard. Go on. They say it isn't a public footpath. Hallelujah. It's a public bridleway. What's that when it's a Well, it's, it's like a public footpath, but horses can use it too. The previous owners didn't mind it, so it fell into public convenience. What? Ooh. I wish you'd fall into a public convenience. You mean public access? Well, I quite like the idea of horses galloping across my view. Yes, because your mind's addled with Catherine Cookson. These riders don't gallop, then. They just sit on their horses eating sandwiches in my garden. You're coming across well. Good. Remember, Good. there's a vacancy here now. Then keep your voice down. His body's barely cold. Fortune favours the bold. The time is upon us. Have you ever seen The, uh, the Devil's Nanny from the film The Omen? No, why? Just you remind me of it, that's uh, all. Um, try saying, have no fear, little one, I am here to protect thee. Have no fear, little one, I am here to protect thee. If you'd knocked on my door at Halloween, I would have fouled my unders. Sorry, Just, sorry. Yeah, and then give you some sweets. As the Dalai Lama says, the show must go on. Ah, uh, yeah, you cock a snook at bad news, don't you? I, I do, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm a snook cocker. I'm sure there's an anagram in there somewhere. What? Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Just, I'm just saying, I'm sure there's an anagram in there somewhere. Oh. Doesn't matter. Press on. Introduce your next guest. Calling me that? Not an anagram. Simon Denton there. Funny Simon Denton. Yes. What's fascinating about history is that, unlike bread in a bakery or love in a marriage, it's never going to run out. <laughs> But military history is a genre all of its own. A new series promises to shed light on battlefield ingenuity and we'll be talking to its presenter, Sam Chatwin, very shortly. Hello. Shortly. But first, since military history is a subject close to my heart, I thought I'd don my wellies and shed a bit of light on one of my favourite battles. Let's take a look at my report. A simple stream in North Walsham, Norfolk. 
But six centuries ago, this stream would have flowed with the blood and entrails of fallen men. I was hoping to illustrate it by pouring in this bucket of butcher's waste. But some Dilbert at the council seems to think it would contaminate the water supply. So close your eyes instead and imagine bits of dead men bobbing about in red water. This was the Peasants' Revolt of 1381, caused, some say, by underpaying the workers. But there's compelling evidence that low wages actually increases productivity. As Kirsty Allsop says, a well-fed dog is a slow dog. Whatever the pros and cons, there can be no excuse for the peasants' antisocial behaviour. The execution of their ringleaders serving as a timely reminder that laws are there for a reason. Behind me is North Walsham Heath. What well, today is a pleasant place to rest was once a peasant place of rest, since many of them lay dying here. You see, razzed up on scrumpy and injustice, they brought to the battle only guts and aggression. And as anyone who's played squash against Adrian Childs will tell you, guts and aggression are no match for skill and tactics, unless his opponents had a big breakfast. The battle was bloody. After the first day, the bishop's men set up camp here on the heath place for the pooped troops to regroup and recoup. They would have discussed tactics with the free hot meal included. Though potatoes in those days, of course, they hadn't been developed. It was simply lamb shank or the classic chicken. In contrast, one can picture the peasants loaded on cider, weeing into bushes, telling disgusting jokes before attacking the bishop's men in dawn raids. But the lack of organisation meant they were no match for the deft swordsmanship and combat nurse of a trained unit. <laughs> the labourers were serfs, their hands more used to drawing milk from a goat teat than wielding a sword. The trained soldiers knew to have one hand on the hilt, the other on the pummel. That is what I do. <laughs> I've got kids. <laughs> battle continued. The bishop's men fighting off futile frenzy and sometimes rubbish attacks from the peasants. The battle continued till dusk. The last of the rebels dispatched had a bloody defeat that could have been avoided if the peasants had simply raised their concerns through the correct channels. A sobering reminder that war, be it the First World War, the Second World War, or the Great War of China, always takes a heavy toll. We've been fighting. Anna was the winner. <laughs>